सत्यमेव जयते इन दिस टॉपिक यू आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट पामीर नॉट सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो लेट्स गो टू द इंडियन सबकॉन्टिनेंट ओके एज यू कैन सी दिस इज द इंडियन सबकॉन्टिनेंट एंड दीज आर द कंट्रीज तजिकिस्तान अफगानिस्तान पाकिस्तान इंडिया एंड चाइना ओके द कंट्रीज दैट वी आर इंटरेस्टेड इन now there is one particular country that we are essentially focused on that is tajikistan okay we are at this point only interested in tajikistan now the question is what is pamir knot let's say you take two or three threads this is thread 1 and this is thread 2 and you tie these two threads when you tie these two threads you have a knot right so essentially you have understood what's a knot similarly let's say there are many mountain ranges that converge at a point in central asia that is known as pamir knot right pamir essentially means roof of the entire world okay so that's tajikistan and this is pamir knot this is that place where at least five mountain ranges converge now we are going to discuss this each of these mountain ranges in clockwise direction now let's start with the one which is located at the north the first one is uh tian shan mountain okay tian shan mountains these are mountain ranges that runs along central asia okay tian shan so this is the mountain range and as you can see this mountain range reaches parts of pamir okay as you can see it reaches parts of pamir similarly you have uh, another one that is kunlun okay kunlun mountain essentially runs through ladakh these days it's known as china okay it runs along china and this is the kunlun mountain range right next we have another mountain range which goes through india that is the karakoram range and this is how the karakoram range look like okay and we definitely have the himalayas which also touches the pamir knot okay so these are the himalayas okay these are the himalayas then we have one more mountain range which basically acts as a boundary between afghanistan and pakistan so this is that mountain range okay as you can see this is the mountain range called as hindu kush now if you see properly all these mountain range basically converge at one place called as pamir knot you have tian shan mountain which converges at pamir knot you have kunlun mountain which converges in pamir knot you have karakoram range converging at pamir knot you have himalayan ranges converging at pamir knot you have hindu kush converging at pamir knot all the ranges are converging at pamir knot now let's uh, you know see a 3d diagram how this pamir knot actually looks like so essentially as you can see pamir knot that place is actually a plateau okay it's a table like pamir knot essentially is a plateau this will give you a definite idea how this area looks like once again you have the whole mountains tian shan kunlun karakoram himalayas and hindu kush and in between you have the plateau pamir knot right pamir knot is essentially known as the roof of the world so why pamir knot is important for indian history that's a very definite question so as it happens you pretty much know that buddhism started in india siddharth okay siddharth was born in nepal but gautam buddha was uh, born in india buddhism was started in india right now buddhism started spreading now as you can see the region mentioned in yellow is the region of pamir knot and the adjoining areas this region became the point where many ideas of buddhism was cultivated right essentially this region is part of the silk route now buddhism spread to parts of china the mainland china as you can see it has spread to parts of china now it bounced back and again spread into parts of ladakh so eventually by 1st century ad to 600 ad this region became quite prominent with buddhism many travelers were interested in traveling to india because buddhism essentially originated in india right so there were few chinese travelers which were who were interested in traveling to india by the sea there were few who traveled through 
Myanmar's forest. However, there were many travelers who were interested in traveling through the Pamir Nord and that region. So Pamir Nord essentially became quite a hub for Buddhist teaching. It was important for the dissemination of Buddhist teaching. So that's why Pamir Nord is important in Indian history. Now you should also know that uh, Chuantu is a name that was given by these Chinese travelers for the region that is now known as India because Chuantu essentially means the region of great philosophy. The great philosophy is Buddhism. Now, as you can see, you have integrated two aspects of UPSC exam. One is geography as well as history. That's how it has to be learned.